Every Sunday, you guys provide an illustration for this week's message. And uh, I'll call it, I'll just point it out. Uh, you know what? These are folks who are gifted and talented, are they not? And they exercise their gifts well for us every Sunday. And because of that, we are drawn into an experience instead of just being spectators. And I asked Mike beforehand if I could point him out. Have you ever noticed Mike playing the drums here? It, it looks like he's flying a helicopter to me. <laughs> because there's stuff flying all over the place and all kinds of little stuff going on. And these little deals there, I like that especially. And every once in a while, he bongs that little tiny... What's it called? Finger symbol? Okay. <laughs> Bong. He bongs that little deal. But uh, I, I told Mike I was going to ask him these questions. Mike, were you like born playing the drums? No, you weren't. Okay, well, it looks to us like you may have been. Well, tell you what then. Um, how did your being able to do this with us on a Sunday morning, how did that begin? Pots and pans. So as a little bitty kid, I guess, you just wanted to. So it began with a desire. And, uh, you know, that's one of the biggest projects that those of us who've been parents and our parents to recognize interests in our kids and nurture those. Well, apparently there was some form of nurturing going on because uh, who bought your first set of drums? Your mom and dad did. And then you really had the real thing to play on, and you practiced. And so, you see, that's the exercise of a gift that Mike does every Sunday morning that we all benefit from. In fact, did you know, this may be news to some of y'all, did y'all know that First Baptist Church is a charismatic church? It's a charismatic church because charismatic is a combination of two Greek words. Charis is gift. Matic means of the Spirit. And so charismatic is a gift of the spirited church. And that's what you are. You are every Sunday. In fact, I tried to add it up this week, but I know there's things that go on so far behind the scenes that I don't even get to see them. But this week, I came up with a list of 70 different contributions that people in this room made this week in this church family. And that was just a normal, normal a week, like every week. And now, it wasn't necessarily 70 different people because some people play multiple roles throughout the week, but there were 70 different ways that you exercised your giftedness, charismatic, exercising your spiritual gifts. That's what we're going to talk about this week. And since uh, we had such a great illustration from the whole worship team and others too who've played roles already this morning, we don't have to use any handcuffs this week. And, and so, you know, last week we, we did that. We kind of went to extremes. But these guys are the illustration for this week's message. Gifted and talented. And we're doing a little bit different deal this morning. See that? I got them a little magic clicker here. And, uh, you know, how does that work? I have no idea. But I can hit a button, and it does that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And that's the way it is, really, with our gifts. You know who's the most surprised in the exercise of their gifts when it turns out well? The one doing it. It's always a surprise. It really is. And so we're going to be talking about giftedness. And being talented this morning. And uh, so I've saved on purpose this time to introduce Kelly. She's the gift of God, second only to Jesus in my life. And uh, Kelly was able to come this week, and she's here. She's not just an imaginary friend. And you guys have seen uh, her picture a couple of times up on the screen, but here she is, live and in person. And, and so I thank God every day for Kelly, the gift to me. But there's another gift at the beginning of this message that is the foundation on which all of the rest is even dependent and exercised. And Ephesians is where I really this message was based. You know, last week we were talking about the unity of this body as we exercise our gifts. In all of the appeals to exercise gifts, the emphasis is always also made by Paul on unity, doing that in unison, and uh, being a part of a symphony 
instead of solo acts. And also in that same book, we looked at Ephesians chapter 4, the basis for last week's message. But before that was the bigger gift in Ephesians 2. And uh, how many of you may even know this verse by memory? For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. Here's the word. It is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. That is the gospel in one statement. And so any rendering of looking at giftedness in the Bible would be totally incomplete if we didn't look to the first gift. This is, you know, there's two. We use that word gift in two different ways. One is if I give you a gift as a noun, then, then that is something that you would receive, a gift received. But then when you or I exercise our gifts or our gifting, that's a whole different use of that word, isn't it? One is a gift you receive. The other is a gift that you give away. And so based on the foundation of this first gift, I just want to make sure every once in a while to go back to the gospel because, you know, how in the world did we get the idea that God may have made a down payment for us on the cross and then he gives us a monthly payment book. How did we ever get that idea? When my dad turned 85 years of age, my brothers and sister and I got together, we all pitched in together, and we bought Daddy a brand new car. We did it together. And when we gave Daddy it for his 85th birthday, when we gave him the car, we didn't say, hey, Daddy, we were able to scratch together the funds to make a down payment, and we made that, but then here's your payment book. We didn't do that. We didn't give him a payment book. When Jesus paid for our, paid for, did you get the word? Our sins on the cross. He didn't make a down payment. And subsequent to that, he didn't give us a payment book. Our right relationship with God is utterly and totally built on what Jesus did. That's why it's called a gift. And it's that gift that then we, we come and, you know, we're not trying to be good enough or going to church enough to keep, you know, God from being mad at us. The gift is our, the last three words that Jesus said on the cross were these. It is finished. And that was an accounting term that means this. Paid in full. That is the gospel. And the only contribution that you and I make to our relationship with God being restored is this. Trust. We trust Him. You know, He has taken the initiative. You know, grace. Have you heard the acronym? G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. He paid the bill. And so those of us who are called together by His name, we do so paid in full. Our relationship with him is intact based on what he did. We've received that gift from him. And we don't try to, we don't have, it would have been an insult, would it not? If every month my dad would have called me and Don and Janie on the phone and said, okay, I'm ready to make a payment. It's, Daddy, it's already paid for. And so if we think that we need to be good to keep God from getting mad at us, he's, we're insulting him. He's saying, it's already paid for. It's already paid for. Receive that gift. Not by work, says it right there. But it's a, receive, it's a gift of grace. Don't want to ever miss that. Don't want to ever miss that. You know, the average American has to hear the gospel eight times before it clicks. And so if you've been coming to church and maybe for a lot of your life and today that first clicked, then you can resign from having to earn God's favor. It's already done. But you can leave this room having said to him and all of us, I receive it and I'm trusting him. That's the gospel. So that's gifted. Each of us is gifted and uh, each of us is also talented. And... Uh, there are actually three different chapters in the Bible, all of them written by Paul, and they're very, very similar. 
Last week we looked at the Ephesians 4 passage, and this week we're going to look at, you know, focus in on the uh, Romans uh, 12 pas uh, passage. But each of these, very, very similar to one another, and uh, it talks about having received a gift from God, and now also having been given gifts, like playing the drum, in order to express and share the gift of God with other people. And all of us are gifted. Those are the three passages. Those, those are the three chapters. Actually, there's four lists in these three chapters that would be called the gifts of the Spirit. So just look around, everybody. Nobody's excluded. Everybody in the room, gifted and talented. I went to the Texas Education Agency website this week, and I looked up what it is, is the Gifted and Talented Program. It's an official designation in the state of Texas, and here's what it takes for a kid to get in the Gifted and Talented Program at their church. It's when a teacher recognizes potential. It's not accomplishment. When a teacher recognizes potential in a kid, then that student can be then enrolled in the gifted and talented. So look around. This is a room full of talents and potential. And nobody is excluded in our spiritual sense. Nobody is gifted, is excluded from the gifted and talented group. All of us. Let's look at this passage together, okay? You can turn to it in your Bibles, Romans 12. I used this translation this time, and this helps me you know, to get the cobwebs out. How many of us, I mean, we've read some passages so many times that when we start reading it, we kind of go into automatic mode. And it never gets our attention. And one of the anecdotes against that, going into automatic mode, is changing translations from time to time. And it's so easy to do it. I, could, I have hundreds of translations of the Bible on my phone right here, access. And so it's real easy to do these days. But I picked this, the New Living Translation, it's not a paraphrase, but a translation, just to change up the terminology a little bit so we would see it again. Okay, let's read this passage together and think of it in terms of you, okay? As if Paul were writing this to our church and you are included in our church. He was writing this one to the book of Rome, uh, the church in Rome. And it says like this, just as our bodies, one of those metaphors, have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. That's the church. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong. Remember the handcuffs? We all belong to each other. I'm stuck with you, <laughs> and you're stuck with me. We're handcuffed together. In His grace, God has given us differing, different gifts for doing certain things well, I wanted to underline that word for us, different gifts. So if God has given you the ability to, and he lists four different things, actually seven in this list, if he has given you the ability to prophesy, and he defines what that means, speak with as much faith as God has given you. Okay, he goes on to another. If your gift is serving others, it's another gift, isn't it? Serve them well. Uh-oh, you might want to wake that, there it is. Uh, if your gift is to encourage, man, there are lots of encouragers in this room. And I, you know, got Alfonso to list on the church website yesterday. You know, a statement that I made today, I'm going to be speaking on the subject of gifted and talented. And it's an easy assignment. And one of the gifts that you exercise so often with me is the gift of encouragement. A lot of encouragers in this room. It's one of the spiritual gifts. So it's the serving, encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. You know what? I'm really amazed when I look at the bulletin every week and see the, the offering that you guys give. You guys give way over the offering that most churches that would have this many people would ever have. It's amazing. A lot of gifted people, a lot of generous people exercising the gift of giving okay let's keep on going if uh, God has given you leadership ability take the responsibility seriously I see so many of you exercising that you know when we have our church council meeting 
You take that seriously. When I see the deacons gathering together, they take the leadership role that you have given them very seriously. The pastor discernment committee, or pastor search committee if you'd prefer, they are taking that job very seriously. And that's an exercise of the gift of leadership, is it not? And then he goes on to say, if you have the gift for showing kindness to others, I see this church doing that every single week. Do it gladly. So there was the gifts that he put in this particular list to that particular church. And the same man wrote three different letters to uh, different churches. One in Rome, this one. One in Corinth. And then one in Ephesus. And so because of that, he listed gifts in each of those places. But you know what? When you look at those three gifts, those, th those four lists in those three different chapters... They're not the same every time. And so when you think of spiritual gifts, it's not like, okay, what are the biblical spiritual gifts? Well, that's not a definitive list. I think it's an example list. And in those particular churches, Paul recognized those particular gifts and just encouraged the people to exercise them well. But in the Corinthian, 1 Corinthians 12, he actually gives two different lists. In the same chapter, addressing the same thing, but you know what? Even those two lists are not the same. And this is what I surmise from that. When you look at these lists and they're all different, here's what I surmise. That there is no such thing as an exhaustive list of spiritual gifts. It's always kind of bugged me. You know, I've gone through these little classes and stuff when they look at the spiritual gifts and they lift them all and they say, okay, which one are you? And I'm going, man, I'm not sure... I relate to any of those. You know what? I don't think we have to. Because it doesn't ever say in those lists, this is the exclusive list. Or even when you put them all together, there they are, 15 of them that are lifted in the Bible. I still don't think that that's an, an all-inclusive list of spiritual gifts. I already called it out this morning. I think playing the drums is a spiritual gift. I think people in this room have gifts that would never fit on that list. And I see you exercising those gifts week in and week out. Because think of it, you know, each of those three letters was written to churches in the first century. Think about the difference between the churches in the first century and our church today. Number one, they didn't have any buildings. And with buildings, guess what we need? We need plumbers. We need electricians. We need painters. We need floor moppers. We need toilet cleaners. We need leak fixers. And on and on the list go. We need yard mowers. Weed eater runners. Broom pushers. <laughs> Think of all the stuff that comes with this tremendous gift of this facility. They didn't have any of those. They didn't have any facilities. They met in homes. But with these facilities, the list of Gifts of the Spirit that complement the whole just grows, doesn't it? All right, well, think about it this way. They didn't have websites. I am thankful that we have websites. I'm thankful for the work that Alfonso does on our website. And I think it is the exercise of a spiritual gift when he does so. Yesterday when we were trying to get my computer going, I had no idea. I have no idea how any of this stuff works. He knows how this stuff works. And we got together yesterday afternoon, got it all going good. And that was the exercise of a gift that is spiritual in nature. Exercise. How about sound systems? They didn't have microphones and speakers and lights and all that stuff. All of those are gifts that are exercised by people in our church. And they're all spiritual in nature because they all point to the same mission. Those are the exercise of spiritual gifts. So if, I think, I'm, again, I've, I've already given it to you, I am speculating, okay, that if Paul were to write with the same sentiment, the letter that he did, would have, he, he did to the Roman church, the church in Corinth, and the church in Ephesus, and he were writing it to us, First Baptist Church, Del Rio, in the 21st century, I think it would look something like this. The first paragraph is an exact 
It's the very same words that we just read in Romans chapter 12. Just as our bodies have many parts, recognize how clearly this relates to us. Isn't it amazing that a book written 2,000 years ago, a letter written 2,000 years ago, applies to us as if it were written last night? That's what this does. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other, handcuffs. In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. It admits this is an exclusive, certain things. That kind of leaves it open, doesn't it? And I came up with a list. So if God has given you the ability to, how many are flattered by that very first one? <laughs> Anybody know how to clean toilets? Guess what? We've got about a dozen of them in this building. Yeah, and if they weren't cleaned every week, we'd all know it, wouldn't we? Thank goodness someone is exercising this gift and serving this body in that way. And just go ahead and go down the list. Each of those is an exercise of giftedness in our church every single week. Did you know we had prison ministry? Yeah, we do, don't we? Did you know we had nursing home ministry? Sure do. I didn't list one up there. We have a senior adults ministry on Mondays called Merrily Mature. I got it right. And see, all of these things are going. You know what? That we have these bulletins in our hands. Somebody printed those up. You know, exercising a giftedness by God that we all benefit from. And here's what, you know, the point, you know, what, how badly would Mike be robbed if we didn't give him a place to exercise that gift? Isn't it a gift that we give him every Sunday? I don't know who bought that drum set, did you? No? I don't know who did, but whoever did, exercising the gift of giving, made it possible for Mike to exercise a gift that is spiritual in nature and is playing the drums every Sunday. Isn't that cool? It really is. So not only is Mike given a chance to exercise his gift, somebody already exercised the gift of giving. And, and you know, the tra tragedy really would be if Mike were sitting there and saying, you know what, I can play drums, but I don't want to draw attention to myself. I don't want to be presumptuous, make think of, People think that I have some great gift in this, so I'm just going to lay low and I'm going to sit on my hands in church because I don't want to draw attention to myself. Be tragic. Thank you for not doing that. And said, he says, that's something I like doing and that's something that I'm going to do. Yeah. See, the tragedy is when we don't exercise your know, heart. And as you look at that list, you know what? Like I mentioned a while ago, some of those things are done, multiple things done by some of the same people. And nobody's complaining. Nobody. Nobody's complaining. But what I'm wondering is who's being robbed from the ability to play the drums? Who has a gift, even if it's cleaning toilets, that when they exercise that gift, they could see God's pleasure on them and saying, I'm a part of this body. I'm going to contribute. And that's my part. And even if nobody even knows I did it, how better is that? You know. This is one more thing about spiritual giftedness. Let's see here. What else have I put on there? Not only do we ask the question of which is your gift, I think, what is your gift? So it's not from picking from that list, but what can you do? So there may be some expressions of your giftedness that we never even have thought of yet. And then maybe this, really to zero. Nobody excluded from this question, what is your gift? What is mine? The amazing thing about spiritual gifts is even they have to be exercised. You know, like Mike said, he wasn't born playing the drums, he had to learn how to do that. Buckner Fanning, the first time he was called, some of you know him, former pastor for 38 years, Trinity Baptist Church in San Antonio, world-famous preacher. The first time Buckner spoke in public, 
It was before he and Martha even married. It was an event at First Baptist Church in Dallas. And uh, it was 4th of July, and he had been in the Marine Corps. So they asked him to do a speech on patriotism. Martha said it was so bad that she felt like they should have hung the flag upside down. <laughs> okay, how many of you have heard Buckner Fanning preach before? Didn't need hanging flags upside down, did you? Incredible. I'm influenced to this very day by his preaching. But you know what? According to Martha, Buckner didn't start out very good. <laughs> and in the exercise of what we all recognize as a gift from God in Buckner Fanning, started in a form that needed to be developed, exercised. Uh, I appreciate you guys. You're really encouraging to me and even you know, my attempts at bringing message, messages to you. And I don't have an inflated view of myself. I mostly attribute you know, your encouragement to something that God has called me to do and not something that I volunteer to do. I'm exercising still uh, a gift from God, which is, comes in form of responsibility. The first time I had an opportunity to preach was when I was in college, a senior in college, and the churches in our association you know, 20 or 30 of them, I guess, had asked our Baptist Student Ministry Director, Stephen F. Austin, to send some guys and girls, probably to out to some of the churches, and they were going to have a youth-led revival series. Simultaneous, all the same, the same week. And uh, what we were called upon to do is preach Sunday morning in a church, preach Sunday night in a church, and then Monday night. And so each of us, Needed to put together three messages in order to do this. And uh, Marcus got low enough on his list, he invited me to be one of those guys who did that. And you know what? That Sunday morning, my parents drove over, it was in Hemp Hill, Texas, at First Baptist Church in Hemp Hill. My parents drove over from Tyler and sister too, and came. In fact, my sister were talking about it a few weeks ago, and she was talking about how embarrassing it was. And I can even quantify how embarrassing it was. I thought I had three messages. And in seven minutes, I did all three of my messages. And I was done. And then the pastor of the church said, well, okay, that's all right. You know, everybody has to start somewhere. And some of you are wishing I could do, I did three in seven minutes today. I know. <laughs> I get in that big a hurry. But let me just say this. Nobody's excluded from this spiritual gifting thing. Just like nobody's excluded from the invitation to receive that gift of a relationship with God, everybody, everybody's invited to receive that gift. All of us who do are given abilities to serve Him back and serve each other back. And let's just keep doing it well. And if you feel left out, we have ways to give you contributions to make. And uh, come see us and do that, okay? Isn't it a great thing when, when you feel like you've made a contribution, especially, probably, the ones that nobody knows you did? Just you and God. And you do those as unto him. Colossians 3.23 from the same passage, same, one of these same books. Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto men. And that's what I see Dunamis Spirit doing. I can tell. Those folks don't get up and say, Hey, everybody, look at me. Look how good I am. Do they? They're able to lead us in amazing ways. You know, 9, 10, 11, 12 of them, depending on the given Sunday, they are able to, instead of draw attention to themselves, point all of our attention to the Lord. Exercising spiritual gifts. Let's do it well, okay? Let's keep on exercising our giftedness. And if you've come up with some new ideas today, if you'll get with us, we have places for you to exercise those gifts. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. It's incredible, first of all, that you would offer us a gift that we could not and don't have to, even if we tried, earn your favor. But you've already given that to us as a gift. Absolutely, totally paid in full. But Lord, also, it's the biggest surprise to so many of us in this room that we have anything to give back. That we have a contribution to make to your kingdom work 
especially and particularly in this church. But we thank you that you give us gifts to give back to you and each other. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.